Christian Axiom TV. I'm your host, Tom Burrett, and this is episode number 40, part two in the Steve Weiss Interactive Contest. And uh, I have to say, I've been really, really uh, enthusiastic about all the comments and the way, you, the way you guys are interacting with blog posts and uploads and videos and tweets and all kinds of stuff. And so it's just, it's really been fantastic to see how you guys are doing with all this. And uh, we're going to get on with part two of that series here in a moment. But before we do, uh, we have this a little bit of a tradition uh, of reading some comments aloud before we get going with the show. So we're going to do that today before going on with part two. And so this is, uh, let's see, this is from Matt Levine. Hi, I'm looking forward to being part of the interactive contest as I'm writing for, as I'm waiting for my first two videos to upload, I looked up all the French terms. Thanks, Matt. That's awesome. And you can check out his comment. Uh, at the Steve Weiss music blog. Uh, he uh, goes on and leaves translations for the French. That's great. Thank you so much. And let's see. This is from Taylor Armstrong. Well, to answer the question of the episode, I think that before you even start playing the piece, it's, piece, it's good to analyze it. True. To analyze the piece, you could start by looking up all the unfamiliar words and beats in the music. You can then figure out all the harmonics of the piece, also figure out all the keys that the music goes into, and just the overall form of the song. That's great. Yep. Absolutely. Actually, we're going to get into that in a little bit. Maybe you can talk a little about the next episode. I will, Taylor. <laughs> I just recently learned how to do this, and I think it helps a lot. Thanks again for what you're doing. I can't wait to watch the video, and I'm going to tell as many people as I can about the contest. And that's key. Thank you, Taylor, for doing that. That's amazing. Tell as many people as you can. All right. So on with uh, part two. Today's axiom is break it down, part two. And we're going to look specifically at measures 10 through 25. We'll be covering a lot of stuff today. So... Um, Hopefully we can do this and, and not take too much time doing it. So we're going to break it down in two areas. So starting in measure 10, we've got uh, sort of the main melody coming in finally in this piece. And so we're going to go through the progression of the harmonic progression. It's pretty simple, pretty basic, but it helps to kind of know where you are in that. So we're going to go through that. And then, then you've got fills in between, and we're going to break those down. And so it's always good to have a plan, like we've been saying, and to break it down. So uh, you'll notice, if you look at this just for a few minutes, you'll notice that uh, measures 10, 12, 18, and 20 are basically all the same. 11 and, nine, uh, 11 and 19 are the same, 14 and 22, 15 and 23, and 16 and 24. That's basically uh, very helpful to know that going in, that those are all the same. So um, <clears throat> as we look at measure 10, we're, we're, we're going to get into this, uh, like, like Taylor was saying, we're going to talk about analysis. It's really good to know a little bit about the harmonic progression here. So we start in A minor, go to D minor, then we get sort of a B diminished to E7, uh, and back to A minor. And of course, that's a pretty, you know, pretty basic progression, but it's very helpful to know kind of where you are in that. So getting right into it, measure 10, we're in A minor, and that continues, uh, yeah. until we get to D minor, which happens in measure 14. And we have the same figure in D minor. And then we get to the B diminished with the F on the bottom. And then we get to the same chord B diminished uh, with B on the bottom. And finally back to the E. So I'll just go through that progression from E minor to D minor to the B diminished. F in the bottom, sorry, F in the bottom first, then the B in the bottom, and then to the E7. And you've got the whole progression. So that's that's what happens basically in this whole um, main section of the piece. So it's always good to know harmonic progressions underneath what's going on. Um, and as you play the right hand in this section, one more other quick note before we move on to the fills um, that kind of link these measures up, uh, is you want to... We're going to build on what we talked about last time with the multiple levels of emphasis, meaning that when we play this right hand, we don't want to play it too square. That's not going to be, it's not going to be very stylistically appropriate. So I find in figures like that that you want to push on the more syncopated notes. Bum, 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 bum. It's a more stylistical approach to that. So we'll push there and then push here. Within the dynamic framework, I think you'll be in good shape as far as the stylistical 
concern is, is there. And you want to practice that slowly as you're playing this as well because you don't want to wait too long to put that emphasis in. Okay, moving on to the fills. So in between each of these measures, measures are, are little fill figures that help propel and connect these ideas. And if we look at those, like we said earlier, uh, we're going to look at them just one at a time. So number one is, is what we have in measure 10. repeats several times later. The second one is measure 11. Uh, so that's the fill in that measure. And of course, measure 12 is just like the previous measure. And then the third one that's a little different is in measure 14, off of beat three. Sorry, it's an e, e, e in the bottom there, sorry. That's the third one. The fourth one is the following measure, measure 15. Uh, we have. And then the last one in measure, in the fifth one, is in measure 16. That's a little bit different to its counterpart, but it's the B uh, diminished thing. So you want to learn each of those individually and separately, and then work on f folding them in. Now I've got two oddballs that are actually probably the hardest two measures in the piece. And that would be measure 13. And I'm going to give you a sticking for this. What I do on this figure here, measure 13, the last half of the bar, is play mallet one off of beat two, two, and then left, then a double right as I play the C in the left hand. And then we get into the D, the D chord. So the sticking there is what I use on that. So that one's a little tricky. You're going to have, we're going to definitely want to isolate that one. Repeat it over and over and over, just like the others, but those are going to be a little bit harder. At least that one will be. And there's one other oddball, and that is in measure 21, this little figure at the last half of that bar, which is especially tricky because you have a three against two figure that you have to kind of deal with. Let's get that right. So I just want to work on that three against two figure in the right hand. Uh, you might have to isolate just that beat if you want to just take uh, your hands, play, you know, I don't know, just get used to playing two against three and then worry about the pitch changes and everything else. So you want to you want to practice the progression first, which is the first part of this. And then you want to work on prog uh, working individually on each of these little what I'm calling fills, I guess, that link each of these measures together. That's all we're going to do for this week. So uh, the first thing I'd like you to do is take the progression, be able to rip yourself through that progression very, very quickly so you know where you are. Uh, if you want to play the actual rhythm, you can do that for each thing. So something like this. Uh, and then that repeats itself. So then we get to the D minor. And then the, uh, the B diminished with the bottom, the F on the bottom. And then the next one. And then to the E. So I would practice that over and over and over again, just that part. You can do it in time and tempo is probably the best idea until it becomes very much second nature. Then you want to isolate each of the little fill measures by themselves. Repeat them until you got them in your muscle memory, until you memorize them even. And then of course the last step is putting it all together and linking it together with the progression material and the fill material. And you put those together, work on it very, very slowly with a metronome preferably. Um, and um, that's a big chunk of the piece right there. So a few words of metrical emphasis, like we talked about last, uh, multiple levels of emphasis, that is. So we talked about in the last episode, you want to watch your dynamics on the fills. Most of the time they're soft and static, or they lead into, like in measure 13, they lead into the downbeat of the, of the following measure. Uh, each of the links that goes into the D chord, for example, kind of lead us into. So you want to make a note of that, the crescendos, whereas in measure 10, it's more static. soft and static. So some are static, some have motion forward. So you want to make a note of that as well. Okay, so I think that about covers it. If you want to, we're not going to forget about the rolls in the first section. Uh, there's a series of episodes I did on rolling um, called This Is How I Roll. I know that's silly, but oh well. Uh, you can visit those to get a lot of my ideas on how to roll better and how I roll, um, literally and figuratively. <laughs> Uh, I forget exactly what episode numbers they are, but they're not too far back. I want to say maybe seven, eight, nine episodes ago or so. So anyway, that's the episode. Hope that was, hope you guys found that helpful. 
Continue telling your friends. It's fantastic that, that there's quite a few of you involved, and I'm looking forward to keeping this thing going. So we always end with the question of the episode, and today's question, actually there's two parts to it. The first question is, how do you like the new Steve Weiss site? If you haven't checked it out, go to steveweissmusic.com, and uh, I think it's really, really hip and very cool. So check that out. And the second, second one is the Longhorn Start, the College World Series against LSU tonight. And I want to know who you think is going to win. Who's going to win? college world series i love baseball and the horns are just you know amazing to follow down here so that's today's episode thank you guys so much for everything and all the comments and i, I can't wait to keep this thing going so 